Okay, so I've got this toilet block here and I'm not 100% happy with it. So you can see we've got two instances of the block and I need to make a change. Well, the AutoCAD, um, like many things in AutoCAD, there's multiple ways of accomplishing the th same thing. One is I could explode it, redefine it. That's kind of the, the old school method of doing things. I could use the edit block in place, which is also a valid option, but it doesn't work with dynamic blocks. What I'm gonna use in this option is I'm gonna use the block editor. So I can use the block editor. And if you're gonna do anything dynamic block wise, then you have to use the block editor. In this case, this is just a regular static block. So you can see that I'm now in its own window. So it's now put me into the block editor, but I still have access to, to all the commands. So I can come to the home tab or the insert command, and I can, I can continue to work on this. So it's like you're opening it up into its own drawing. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, well, I don't really want this circle, so let's delete that circle. And I would like to, um, I wanna get rid of these fillets in the corner here. So I'm just gonna delete those. And I'm gonna use the regular fillet command. And I'm going to create a fillet between those two corners and between these corners. Sorry, it's a little bit different because I'm using AutoCAD Mechanical. So you're saying, well, what's this prop popping up there? It's because I'm using AutoCAD Mechanical as opposed to regular AutoCAD. Now, just because I'm using AutoCAD Mechanical, it doesn't change this block um, editor environment. It's exactly the same um, in any version, really, of, of AutoCAD, whether it's PNID or electrical or architecture or whatever it happens to be. So I've now made my changes. Um, notice that it doesn't matter. I don't have to worry about the insertion point or what the scale is or anything like that. What I can do now is I can close the editor. Well, what I could do is actually save it, then close it, or I'm gonna close in this case because it's gonna prompt me to save it. So by doing so, we can see that the, the block has, has updated. Now, if I take this block, I can see that the current insertion point is right there. What I'd like to do is actually change the insertion point. I'd like to change it so that the, the toilet, um, I can drop it in kind of away from the wall a little bit. So I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna use my block editor, and it goes a little bit into um, dynamic blocks. But what I wanna do is I'm gonna come in here to my parameters here, and I'm gonna drop in a base point parameter. Because what I want is I want this base point parameter to be um, you know, a foot away from, from the end there. Whoops, maybe that was a little bit too far. Let's take this back here a little bit. Let's go back seven inches, sure, we're gonna do that. So that's where we're gonna be our new insertion point. Okay, so I'm gonna close the editor, I'm gonna save my changes, and now notice that the block adjusted because I changed that insertion point. So that's definitely one of the options using the block editor. I mean, in some cases it's nice that you can open the block kind of on its own and deal with in that case. Um, remember that anything dynamic wise has to be done through the block editor. Um, and it does give you the ability to adjust the, the base point or the insertion point, which the edit block in place command does not.